Well, good morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us. I cooked a ham on Easter, and I've made several things with the leftovers because, you know, you always have leftover ham. And now that I've made those several things, I'm going to do the last thing that I always do with a ham bone is make ham and beans. Now, most people I know like ham beans, but many, many of those people don't eat them. Beans are notorious for the intestinal distress that they cause many people. And you know, there are a lot of jokes about it. Mel Brooks and Blazing Saddles, the notorious bean scene, and a lot of people lovingly call beans the musical fruit. So I thought we would spend a little time here talking about how to tame the musical fruit because it doesn't have to hurt to eat beans. Now before we start, if you have just a minute, if you like our videos, if you would click the thumbs up, subscribe, and click the bell icon at the top and you'll get a notice when I post new videos. Now let's see what we can do about those beans. Let's talk a little about why beans upset the stomach so often. And we'll do that as I cook. I have here some cranberry beans. They're a little milder than pinto beans, but not a whole lot different in taste. And I'm going to measure out three cups of these. Now, back to the science. We all have something known as gut flora. That's beneficial bacteria that live colonize your intestinal system and that's basically what digests your food. Now when you put unfamiliar things into your digestive system that flora has to adjust in order to digest it and it can have trouble adjusting properly if you add new things and if you add them in the wrong combinations. That's an oversimplification, but beans have a lot of protein in them. Multiple types of protein plus a lot of fiber. And as I'm sure you already know, when you eat high fiber foods, you need to drink a lot of liquid, a lot of water. And that liquid needs to not have protein in it. So no milk with beans. I'm going to do now what you call picking. I'm going to pick the beans. Some beans, according to where you buy them, can even can have lots of stuff in it, even little tiny rocks. So you go through with your hand and you look and you take out anything that doesn't look like a bean or that is really black and hard because sometimes you'll get some like that. I buy these organic beans and I almost never get that, but you still want to pick them. So, the first step in helping to break down those proteins in the beans is we're going to rinse them really, really well. And to do that, I'm going to set this colander in a bowl and fill it up with water. This step's very important. Don't skip it. Uh, the first thing is I fill it up with water and let it sit. And if there's any little debris, it will rise to the top. Now this thorough rinsing is very important. Besides the uh, fiber and the proteins, beans have something called phytotoxins. All vegetables have some level of phytotoxins. Uh, it's their natural defense against pests. Different varieties have different levels of phytotoxins. And they can add to the distress, so we're going to do what we can to eliminate those. Now that was three cups of beans. I'm going to add nine cups of water to the pot. And that's three times whatever amount of beans you use. And then I'm going to cover them and just move them back on the counter and leave them there overnight. And yes, I know there are quicker ways to do this. There is a quick soak method. We're talking about eliminating your stomach distress. Soak them overnight. If beans don't upset your stomach, do them any way you want. But soaking them helps everything start to break down. And the process I'm showing you 
is about breaking down those proteins and getting rid of the phytotoxins. So these have soaked overnight. They have to be rinsed again and thoroughly, just as we did before. And then I've put them back in the pan and I'm going to add enough water to come about an inch over the beans. At this point, anything that floats needs to be taken out. And really good beans, you won't have many that float. Sometimes when you buy them in the grocery store, they're a little old and they might. So clean off the floaties. Then put them on the stove on high and bring them to a boil. Now you see what's on top here? You see that foam? That foam is part of your distress. We want to get rid of that. I turn the heat down and I'm going to take a minute and skim off every bit of the foam that I can. In that foam are many of the things that cause you stomach distress. We're breaking down the phytotoxins, we're breaking down the protein, and each one of these steps that we're taking eliminates some of the problem. No one of the steps eliminates all of the problem. The steps so far are picking, rinsing, soaking, and skimming. So I have no seasoning, no pork, no nothing in these right now. And I'm not going to add anything until they're almost done. Not totally done, but soft. And if anything that you add now can impede that softening process and getting them soft is one of the ways that we eliminate the distress. It makes it easier on your stomach. I've heard people say, I just have cooked them and cooked them and they won't get done. Well, if you add the salt too early, then you have trouble getting them done. So, how long does it take to get them done? People say two to three hours. No, that's not enough. I'm going to cover these up now and cook them for two hours to start with on a low heat. Uh, and you want a little bit of the water to evaporate. You don't want much of it to evaporate. But you have to let a little air get to these because even in a low heat, they may cook out on your stove. So I'm going to put my lid on and leave a little vent, set my timer for two hours, and then I'll be back. So it's been two hours, actually it's been about two hours and 15 minutes since I started the slow cook. And I'm going to test these. Now I don't expect them to be done. If you're eating beans at two hours, that's probably one reason they upset your stomach. The fork goes in, they're not soft, but they are pretty much rehydrated at this point. Now we want to add something to them to help start breaking down the proteins. And I'm using turmeric. You can also use ginger, but I'm going to put about a half teaspoonful of turmeric in here now. and. I don't actually know all the science on this, but something about the chemical makeup of turmeric and ginger, and there may be others, helps the proteins start to break down so that when they get to your stomach, to your digestive system, part of the work has already been done. This adds no taste. By the way, you won't taste this. Um, it won't change the flavor but it will start changing the chemical makeup to make them easier for you to digest. So now we can add our salt. Uh, I don't add pepper, by the way, uh, to beans you can. That's about a half teaspoonful of salt and I'll taste them again. I'm a little light on the salt because the ham um, was kind of salty, not, not bad. Uh, if you have a country ham hock, then you probably don't want to add any salt because those are very salty. So now they've cooked two hours 
and everything is in them. I'm going to cover the pot again. I'm going to cook them another two hours. And you know, you could cook them six. Just watch your water. The dunner they are, the less distress they will cause. But these are done. And if you cook them six hours, that juice will get thicker and thicker and thicker. But dinner is done. Let's plate these up. And here you have a nice little bowl of beans. And I know you see cornbread, that's part of the process. It's better to serve with a whole grain. Some cornmeal is whole grain, some is not. But cornbread, it's better than white bread to serve with your beans, health-wise. Also, you want to go light on the rest of the proteins. There's, there is some bacon there. Uh, on my cabbage steak, but you want to go light on the proteins. You don't want to be having a big slice of roast beef with these. And the last step, very important, to eliminate bean distress, eat beans. Your gut flora will develop to digest them if you eat them. And if you have to add them back in slowly, if you've been without them for a while, start by eating a tablespoonful a day for a week or so, and then a quarter cup, and then a half cup. And by the time you get through that, your stomach can handle the beans without so much distress. They may still be a little musical, though. I love beans. And if you love beans, but you just aren't eating them, try this. Give it a shot. I hope you enjoy them. I hope this helps and hope to see you again tomorrow.